presented by The Boys. Taking the fight to superheroes on Amazon Prime Video on July 26th. In a world where a bankrupt comic book company sold the film rights to its best characters for peanuts because they thought movies would be a good way to <coughs> sell more comics, a young executive will do what he can with the rejects that no one wanted and do so well they get bought out by Disney before it was cool. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, except for Endgame. Welcome to the MCU, a TV series made of movies about comic books where magic is actually science. Your ancestors called it magic, and you call it science. But not by magic, by technology. Magic. Science. But science is basically magic. Boy Scouts of Boy America. Boy Scouts of America. Yes, it is a worthwhile organization. I didn't physically check the crates. And meet your typical MCU protagonist, a loner with no pets, no biological siblings, and whose only friends are their co-workers. Aww. Whose personality can range from lighthearted quipster. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. To stern, duty-bound military type. You get hurt, hurt them back. You get killed, walk it off. And on a long enough timeline, everyone becomes a quipster. Bitch, please, you've been to space. Follow along on their hero's journeys, where after a motivating Uncle Ben situation, they'll get a transformational hairstyle, cut some carbs, and find the strength to boldly say their superhero name out loud. I'm Captain America. I am Iron Man. I'm Thor, son of Odin. I'm Ant-Man. I am Groot. Nick Fury. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man, then. Star-Lord. Who? But people say a hero is only as good as their villain. And thank God that's not true or the MCU would be hot garbage. Thrill as they spare 10 minutes to establish a bad guy who's just like the hero, but evil. Or a faceless horde. Can't feel bad if it doesn't have a face. Or actually a pretty awesome character and they're dead. But everyone knows the real villain of the MCU is Dad's. He was cold, he was calculating. He never told me he loved me, he never even told me he liked me. You favored Thor all these years. You were wrong to turn your backs on the rest of the world. Everything I hear about myself, he told me. Well, of course I have issues. <laughs> That's my freaking father! I will hunt my father like a dog and I will tear him apart slowly piece by piece until he knows some semblance of the profound and unceasing pain I know every single day. Yeah. Tremble before the girth of a meticulously planned story told across 23 separate movies all about Thanos killing half the universe. Well, first he has to get an infinity gauntlet. No, not that gauntlet. I'll do it myself. Yeah, yeah, that one. And then gather the Infinity Stones. Well, send proxies to get them. And he gives one away, but eventually he'll get the stones. Some aren't stones. While the other relics often appear as stones, the ether is fluid. But then he'll kill half the universe, which also doesn't make much sense. Oh, also, the timeline doesn't work out. Hmm, maybe this wasn't so planned out after all. But the films do sort nicely into three distinct phases. The conventional pop songs phase, the boundary-pushing experimental phase, then the woo, we can do no wrong, I'm a golden god phase. And if rock docs have taught me anything, phase four will have the MCU puking in the gutter wondering where it all went wrong. Journey from the farthest reaches of Viking space to alternate dimensions to the wonders of Earth. Oops, that one's Utopia and marvel at how everything still kind of looks and feels the same as visionary indie filmmakers are funneled into the Marvel style of overlit digital video where everything is CGI. Every story is full of sexless romance that never takes off. No! Oh, what the hell? Bloodless violence <laughs> that never leaves more than a couple of forehead scrapes. All that for a drop of blood. Lifeless soundtracks with more dad rock than you can shake a pair of middle-aged screenwriters at. Feels so good, Chuck Mangione, 1977. Marvin Gaye, 1972, Trouble Man soundtrack. Hooked on a feeling, Blue Swede, 
1973, that song belongs to me! Or toothless comedy that's just saying pop culture things. So this orb has a real shiny blue suitcase, Ark of the Covenant, Maltese Falcon sort of vibe. I'd love to in a Christmas story. Mm -hmm. Shooting Knight Rider or touring with his band in Germany. No hard feelings, point break. You gotta mean swing. We'll build my new Lego Death Star. What? Try me, Beyonce. That man is playing Galaga. You ever see this really old movie, Aliens? We're getting no help from Flash Gordon. I'm very popular, y'all! Shall we play a game? I can footloose the movie. Exactly like footloose. Squidward, Grimace. The gloss of personal flying monkeys. I understood that reference. Blue Lagoon. Gandalf and Harry Potter. Oops, that's Pixels. So settle in for an interconnected movie verse that had a 1 in 14 million 605 shot of working. But those odds didn't stop every other studio from awkwardly mashing their IPs together like a junior high dance floor, leaving Marvel as the only one standing in a dying industry. I could do this all day. But launching a whole new industry of Marvel movie news, theory and analysis, channels that just complain about Marvel movies, and even comedy web series that would have died a long time ago if Marvel movies weren't so popular. <clears throat> so one way or another, in the end, everyone's getting paid by Disney. You shills. Starring Science Geniuses. You could achieve heavy ion fusion at any reactor on the planet. Quantum phasing when an object moves through different states of matter. An einstein rosen bridge is a theoretical connection between two different points of space. The wormhole. Yeah, quantum system would revert back to separate states of matter. Why didn't you just reprogram the synapses to work collectively? When did you become an expert in thermonuclear astrophysics? Last night. Jumping out of airplanes. People of color, leg scissors. Unless you're Ant-Man, then you get a Hyundai and you like it. Dual wielding. <laughs> Dig measuring. I mean, you have me. a big gun, you are not the big gun. Tony, don't be oh, jealous. No, it's not like raging fire, till I like smoldering fire. My record, 21 feet. Not bad. You? 65 feet. Whoa. Yeah. Huge. 65. You get an Iron Man suit, and you get an Iron Man suit, and you get an Iron Man suit. Weird non Stan Lee cameos. Hey, the Oracle of Oracle. Good idea for an electric jet. Uh. <laughs> Multi hit combo. Sure, you know how to fly this thing? You know how to fly this thing? Uh, we'll see. I thought you said you knew how to fly this thing. I said, how hard could it be? Here, take the wheel. No, I don't know how to fly one of these. Now you're a scientist. Use one of your PhDs. And never forget that for all of Guardians 1, they're sitting in Star Lord's jizz. Find a black light? This would look like a Jackson Pollock painting. Ugh, gross, dude. The never ending story. Oh man, we forgot to say anything about the ABC shows, Netflix series, one shots, and spin offs. Eh, so did Kevin Feige. This episode was brought to you by The Boys, a new series on Amazon Prime Video, premiering on July 26th. Is the first episode of our new series, Fandom Uncovered, all about Twilight fans? Yes. Do we have the healthiest history with Twilight? Not so much. But should you check out the official launch of our new series? Heck yes, you should.